Hi, and welcome to Run Tall with Tim. I'm Tim, and I upload new running videos every week. If you're new to the channel, I post new videos on both Wednesday and Saturday mornings, and that's at 5 a.m. Standard Eastern Time here in the U.S. Also, I like to post bonus videos once in a while. So if you enjoy watching running shoe reviews and other videos related to running, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time that I upload new content. Also, if you want to save yourself a little time, you know, I created some chapters. All you have to do is open the description and then click on a timestamp for the part of the video that you want to watch, and it's going to take you right there. On today's episode, I'm comparing two Max Cushion Daily Training running shoes. One by Saucony, the Triumph 18. Now, this shoe is all about luxury and comfort, and it features their Power Run Plus midsole material. Comparing that with the new release from New Balance, their 1080V11. This shoe also is a Max Cushion Daily Trainer that features their Fresh Foam X midsole material. Now, before we get into it too far, let me just demonstrate what it looks like to run in both of these shoes. But then we'll come back together and we're gonna take a close look at each of them to try to answer the question, which one might be right for you? Now this video is not intended to be a full review of either shoe, but if you wanna check that out, I'll put a link in the description below to reviews that I've completed for each one previously. Let's start, we'll just talk about the cost. They both cost 150 US dollars. Now that's pretty much on par with what they're getting for Max Cushion Daily Trainers. Looking at the weight, the Triumph 18 is considerably heavier than the 1080 V11. It comes in at 11 ounces for men's size nine on my scales or 312 grams. While the New Balance 1080 V11 comes in at 9.3 ounces or 264 grams. And again, that's for a men's size nine. Let's turn out and we'll take a look at the upper on each of these shoes. We'll start with the Saucony Triumph 18. Now, as we zoom in and we take a real close look, we can see that it's an engineered mesh material. It has some strategically placed 3D print overlays, and that's to improve the flexibility as well as to give it a little bit of structure. As we pan around the side of the shoe, we can see those 3D print overlays there, along with their Saucony logo that's across that midfoot. As we make our way back around to the heel counter, we can see that they have some pretty good plastic overlay there to give it some structure as well as some stability. So now let's take a look 
at the 1080 V11 and see how their upper compares. Now, as we zoom in and take a real close look here, we can see that it's made of a synthetic mesh material and it has lots of perforations up there in the toe box. It's really soft to the touch. As we kind of pan around to the side of the shoe, you'll see that there's very few plastic overlays with the exception of the New Balance logo that's there in the midfoot. As we make our way back around to the heel counter, it's a different material altogether back there. It's more of a soft, almost neoprene feeling to it, but it adds some structure to the heel counter. And we'll talk about more of that here in just a minute. So let's talk about the differences now between these two. With the Saucony Triumph 18, it's a real form fit shoe and I can feel the difference when, it, you know, when I put one on each foot. Uh, it's real noticeable. I feel much more snugged in or secure across the midfoot. With the New Balance 1080 V11, it's very comfortable, but it's more of an airy feeling to it. So a little bit more light, I guess, <laughs> is a way to describe it. Uh, so just a completely different feeling. Also, you know, I've run in the Saucony Triumph 18 uh, a lot, and I can tell you that that material seems to hold in moisture. At one point in one of my reviews, I think I called it the Saucony Triumph 18 just because that that uh, jacquard mesh material that they make that upper out of just seems to hold in the moisture for some reason. Doesn't mean it isn't comfortable, but if you live in a wetter climate, you know, that might be a factor for you. So now in terms of breathability, you know, I found the 1080 V11 to be a little cooler underfoot. Of course, it is cold here, but I could feel more of that cool air coming through that toe box, giving it a little bit more breathability. Now, where that might come into play is if you live in a hotter climate, uh, you know, and you're trying to decide between these two and you're looking for which one might be the coolest underfoot, I think you're probably going to get a bit of an advantage with the 1080 V11 over the Triumph 18. But in cool weather, like I've been running in, you know, they both do really well and my feet were comfortable. The lacing system or the eyelet chains are very basic. You know, they're pretty much the same across the board. They both have some plastic overlay on the outside to give it a little extra durability. They both have that extra eyelet in case you want to run with a runner's knot. The biggest difference is I was able to get a more locked in secure feeling across the midfoot of the Triumph 18 than I am in the uh, 1080 V11. And I think in part it's because they have all that plastic material there that takes some of the stretch out of the upper so that you, when you cinch those laces down, you can just get it a little bit tighter across your midfoot, kind of locks you in a little better, gets that heel set into place. Where the New Balance 1080 V11, you know, this material has a lot of stretch to it. And that stretch is pretty much everywhere, it seems like, uh, in the material. So I wasn't able to get quite as locked down a feeling. Plus, it just feels like there's a little bit more room up in that midfoot when I put these on. So uh, in terms of, you know, the lockdown secure feeling, in this case, I'm going to have to give the nod to the Triumph 18. Now both have gusseted tongues, so that's really nice. I always appreciate that. That way you don't have to worry about the tongue of the shoes, you know, migrating around or causing any kind of hot spots or discomfort. They stay in place. So I like that aspect of each one. The big difference here is the amount of padding. And then that's true, not just in the uh, tongue of the shoes, but also around the heel collar and the tab where the Triumph 18, and this is why it comes in at you know 11 ounces on my scales is because they packed in about as much padding as they can get in this tongue as well as around the heel collar and the, and the tab of the shoes compared that to basically a minimal amount of padding that's in the 1080 v 11. the tongue is padded it's just not nearly as padded as the triumph 18 is and there's virtually no padding really around the heel collar as well as the tab of the shoes. It's really just a more thick material. Now, where I can see that coming into play is especially in warmer weather, if you're wearing you know, some low cut socks, I think there might be some discomfort there. Now, I put both of these shoes on without socks so I could just get a better sense of the comfort, you know, um, so I could describe it to you guys here. 
And, you know, I, I could tell right away that I wouldn't want to run in a really low cut sock in the 1080 V11 because I, I think there could be a lot of discomfort around my, my ankles, especially it just felt like it could almost get rubbed raw. So just something to keep in mind that you're probably going to be wearing some crew shots, crew socks in a 1080 V11. Another noticeable difference between these two falls in the heel counter. And with the Triumph 18, you know, they've got a lot of structure back here that gives you a, just a little extra stability. So you can see when I try to pinch that together, that's pretty solid. Or if I just try to push forward on that as well, you can see that there's a lot of structure there. So if you're looking for a shoe that has a fair amount of structure in the heel, just, you know, for pronation concerns, anything along those lines, you know, it's a really stable ride with the Triumph 18. Now with the 1080V11, they too have some structure here, just not as much. So you can see I can pinch it together a little bit easier than I can with the uh, Triumph 18 also going forward. There's a little more give that way as well. There's still some structure there, just not as much as you'll find in the 18. So now let's take a look at the midsole on both of these shoes. And with the Triumph 18, you know, they've got their Power Run Plus midsole material. And there's a lot of it. They have 32.5 millimeters in the heel and 24.5 millimeters in the forefoot for an eight millimeter offset from the heel to the toe. I've been impressed with the Triumph 18 uh, performance of that midsole material pretty much since the very first day that I ran in these. And although these shoes are heavy, you know, 11 ounces, uh, you know, they don't act like a heavy shoe when you're out running. I feel like I get a lot of energy return. So, you know, I'm going a little faster in these than I sometimes think that I am just because it takes a little less effort on my part and moving through my gait cycle. So I do appreciate that. Now let's take a look at the New Balance 1080 V11 and that Fresh Foam X midsole material. Here they have 30 millimeters in the heel and a 22 millimeter stack height in the forefoot. So again, they have an eight millimeter offset from the heel to the toe, just like the Triumph 18 does. Uh, it's a very springy or bouncy ride. The first thing I noticed when I took off to run in these is that I felt like I sank down just a little bit into that foam, but I didn't feel like it was mushy, like I was going to get stuck in it, but rather it kind of bounced forward or springed forward for me. So I, I did like that feeling. And again, I do feel like I got some help in my uh, gait cycle, just a little extra you know, bounce or push to help me move through it just a little bit quicker. Uh, also, both shoes have their uh, midsole material has been sculpted in ways to improve or take advantage of the uh, greater energy return when you compress that material. And with New Balance, they have some laser engravings on the lateral side of the shoe. Uh, and for me, and I think most runners, you come down on that lateral side uh, as you run. So it's nice to have a little uh, softer landing there. Uh, just to make it a little more comfortable as you move through your gait cycle. I felt like the 1080V11s are just a little bit more nimble underfoot. A big part of that, I think, has to do with the weight of the shoes. They come in you know, nearly two ounces lighter than the uh, Triumph 18 does. Uh, but both are very soft and comfortable underfoot. I think if you were trying to put together maybe a progression run or something like that, I would pick up the 1080V11 over the Triumph 18, just because, you know, after you've run a number of miles, you know, that extra weight will catch up to you eventually. So on the longer runs, especially if I want to try to pick up the pace toward the end of the run, I'm more likely to pick up the 1080V11. If I'm looking for a lot of comfort, uh, through my run effort, just, you know, so I, when I round the corner and come into my driveway to have some fresh legs that don't feel like they're beat up, then the Triumph 18 is a great shoe for that. Now flipping the shoes over and we'll take a look at the sock and the Triumph 18 first. We'll look at the outsole material and you can see that they have blown rubber from the heel to the toe. So giving you lots of durability as well as some traction when you're out running. Now they have what they call a tri-flex design that makes just for a you know, quicker transition and it increases or enhances the flexibility of the shoe. And I always appreciate that. Anything I can do to help make my transition from my heel to the toe a little smoother through my gait cycle is always much appreciated. So let's flip over the 1080V11s and we'll take a close look at their outsole material. And here again, they're using blown rubber 
But in this case, you know, this adds to both the cushion as well as to the responsiveness that you get when you run in these shoes. They also have some flex grooves up in the forefoot. Now that's just to make it feel a little more natural as you roll through your gait cycle. Overall, I would say the Saucony Triumph 18 is the perfect shoe for those easy long run efforts where you're not concerned about the pace and weight is not a concern. If you want a, a little quicker run and still have a nice soft cushion ride while you get there, but maybe feel a little bit more nimble underfoot, then I think the 1080 V 11 is going to be the right shoe for you. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed making it for you. As always, run tall, run strong, be kind to one another. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.